All yeah, right. Thanks, thanks everybody well, for joining. Yeah, welcome everyone. We're excited to have you here. Um, this is our first presentation on the Grove uh, by Steve Perkins, and we're super excited because him coming from uh, such a large firm and leading IT and the, the CIO function, he has a very, very unique perspective, um, but also as a person for building trust. So Steve, I'm just gonna turn it over to you. You've got a really good presentation today, and I would like to encourage everyone to be very interactive. Um, you can use the chat, you can use the Q&A, and, um, and we would just really love to hear from you as you go along. Um, and Steve, let me know when you'd like to take questions or I can kind of <clears throat> and yeah. interrupt you a little bit. Yeah, you can. All right, great. Okay, good. I'm gonna go on, on mute and into the background and, and, and take it away, Steve. Okay, thanks, Allison. Well, this is a, a really important topic to me. I've learned quite a bit in my 30 years of being in IT about uh, what trust means to an organization. So this is something that's very easy for me to talk about. Um, so let's get right to a little bit about me first. Um, I've worked at two CPA firms my entire career, 30 years. Um, no, I don't know what's wrong with me either, but something about CPA firms has been great for me. Um, just stayed long time, uh, 14 years in my first job and, and uh, 17 in my, in my current role. Um, I've got no formal education in technology. It's all been in business and finance. Um, I got a job right out of college in IT in a very small firm. And now, 30 years later, I'm the uh, CIO of an amazing top 100 firm, Hogan Taylor. Uh, we're based in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and have offices in Oklahoma City, uh, Fayetteville, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I started when we were just 49 people, and I was the senior IT manager just doing internal IT. <clears throat> and now we're about 400 people are creeping up close to that pretty quickly. And our IT group is 11 people. Uh, so quite a bit of change over the years. And one of the big changes that not a lot of IT guys can or gals can make is switching from doing the work to changing over to managing the people that do the work. And I've made that shift um, fairly seamlessly, and I really love my role. Uh, I've been married for 32 years to Gail, um, who I met in college, and we've raised three boys um, into young men now. Uh, the youngest of which just graduated last month from Oklahoma State uh, with a degree in landscape architecture. And he's accepting his first job this week uh, in Colorado Springs at a landscape architecture firm. Uh, and he's moving there in about two weeks. So, Deanna, I'll give him your contact information if you're there. Um, and I'm one of those people that um, live or work to live rather than live to work. So I enjoy doing things outside the firm on my own time. Um, and these are the things that are important to me and my family, um, my puppies. Um, so pretty soon it's just going to be us and our dogs at home. Uh, we have two rescue dogs. Our, our uh, Izzy is our Chewini and Freya is our uh, Belgian Malinois Shepherd. And we got both of them from hoarding rescue situations, pretty bad situations. So they're kind of the light of our lives right now until uh, grandkids come along which hopefully is pretty soon. And then lastly, anybody that knows me knows what really makes me tick, and that is tacos and making pizza. So this is really what I love to do and, and, and uh, find a lot of fun in doing it with my friends. Uh, there's, there's nothing better for me than having a great meal with, with my close friends, people I love. So uh, that's what I do in my spare time. Uh, so the agenda today is just to talk about trust. What is trust? Where does it come from? How can trust make or break an organization or a team? And then ways to foster trust in your organization. Um, like I said before, trust is really one of my favorite topics in business. Um, it's, it's just such a foundational element to everything that happens in a firm. Um, it's critical that we know about it and talk about it. So why should you care about this? Does it really even matter? Um, if, if, if we look at work as just transactional, where we pay people to do a job and they do it and you, you pay them, does it really matter if there's a lot of trust or is there a business reason to foster trust in your organization? And uh, I'm gonna show you that, yes, there is. Um, so many research papers and books and studies have been done on this topic. Um, I'm gonna show you 
what a hit there will be on your organization if there's low trust and inversely what the payoff is if you have a high trust organization. Um, we, we aren't really operating in a vacuum where we're just hiring lemmings to get a job done. We actually work with human beings, people, and these people all bring their unique perspectives, belief systems, and emotions on a daily basis to your organization. Um, and motivating them to work at their highest and best use takes a very strong foundation of mutual trust. Um, so we'll get into that. What is trust? Um, my definition of trust is it's an individual's belief in the reliability, competence, intent, and integrity of another individual or organization. Um, that's just my gut definition of it. Um, trust is a foundational element of a positive, successful relationship of any kind and in your organizations. Uh, but above all else, I find that trust is a very personal thing. It's, it's BYOT, bring your own trust. Uh, so on a team, you have, you have to meet people where they are and customize your relationship to build and maintain that trust because everybody's different. And they bring their own views on trust to your organization. And those relationships take continual effort. Um, you've got to constantly putting, be putting in time just like you do with your relationships at home, your, your marriages and, and your, your kids and things, you've got to constantly be working on, on relationships uh, to keep that trust built. So if we dig a little bit deeper into these concepts, we have uh, a couple of different types of trust, organizational trust and personal trust. Organizational trust is the confidence of the workforce in the company's activities. And that is sometimes referred to as strategic trust. Um, in, in, in an organization with trust, workers are going to feel alignment. They're going to feel that there's fair and equitable treatment. They're going to see that. Um, they're going to feel that there's a culture of inclusion and transparency. And they're going to have ethical leaders who act in good faith. Um, and, and much of this is a, just a gut feeling. You know if you've got trust in your organization and you know if you don't. But those are some of the dimensions of trust in your organization. Um, additionally, organizational trust is very multidimensional. It spans between departments, between offices, up and down the organizational chart. Um, and some, something key to remember is that informal networks of people, individuals, will amplify organizational trust, whether that's good or bad, whatever, through water cooler talk, gossip, whatever. And then the second type of trust is personal trust. This is where you're going to have a relationship with a person and you're going to ask yourself, do they act in good faith with me? Are they willing to be vulnerable and transparent with me? Do they treat me fairly compared to others? Do they do what they say they will do? Those are kind of your, your internal voice talking to you as you're developing a relationship with somebody. And that will set the stage for the trust that you have in them. There's a question out there whether trust is granted or earned and, and in all my, you know, reading business books and, and just seeing the world out there, I, I, we often say that we want to earn somebody's trust, but you, you really don't get any trust until it's granted by the, another individual. Um, you, you can do things to build, to build trust or earn trust, but it, it doesn't happen until somebody grants it to you. Um, Additionally, trust should really be recognized at a situational level rather than at the whole person level. Um, because you can have mixed trust. You can trust in general somebody, but not trust their ability to execute. I think you all know this um, in business. Um, you, can, you can trust a person's intent to do a good job, but you don't have to trust their ability or you can have a lack of trust in their ability and vice versa. Um, firms face this every day in their own, in your businesses, in your, your workflows between tax and audit and, and accounting services. You may have somebody whose intent is good, but they just don't have the skills. So you can't trust them to do the, the, the job correctly. Um, the main point to remember here is that there's no trust until it's granted by one or more people. Um, 
an example I've got from, from my history at my company, I uh, worked with somebody who, who coming into my group trusted nobody and told me that they had trouble with trust. And that was from the outset of the, our, our relationship. I'm a person that implicitly grants trust from the outset. Um, I trust people wholly until they give me a reason not to, but not everybody's like that. And uh, one of my top Clifton strengths is woo, which is winning others over or winning over others. And uh, so one of my strengths is trying to pull people into my circle of trust. And it's really a challenge for me to keep trying to draw somebody in that doesn't have trust of me implicitly. My brain has a really hard time coping with that um, because I want everybody to be friends with me and, and like me and, and trust me. And uh, some people just do not do that. And it's, it's very difficult to, to uh, have those types of relationships, but you have to keep working at them, which is what I do. Um, a few nuances in trust, like we talked about, uh, you, you can have trust in intent, competence and integrity. First, we'll talk about intent. <clears throat> You'll want to know when you have a relationship with somebody, do they have a hidden agenda? Will they act selfishly or put the team and organization first? Again, every individual brings their own level of trust and beliefs in trust to the relationship. And we're all asking ourselves these questions silently in our heads, um, even if it's subconsciously, before we give trust. Next, there's trust in competence. Um, can this person do the job without me hovering over them or micromanaging them, which people don't like typically. So this is another area to just be aware of. Can you trust that they can do the job without being micromanaged? And again, you can have mixed trust. You can trust their intent, but not, not trust their competence and vice versa. Um, just think, have, have any of you worked with someone that was excellent at their job, but just as poisonous as they could be? I'm sure we've all had that situation where somebody was yeah. in order to go ahead. Yeah, feel free to put that in the chat, folks. Um, put yeah. a one if you've worked with someone who was really good at your job, um, at their job, but had really very, very bad intent. And yeah. put a two if you've never come across those sorts of people. Just pop it in, pop it into the chat. One, if you've if you've definitely worked with people that are competent but can't be trusted personally. And number two, if you find and so far everyone has is putting in a one. Yeah. I haven't seen any twos yet. Yeah, so this I... is more common. This mixed trust, Steve, is sure. more common than yep. Thank you, everyone. That really helps. Yeah, thank you. And you know, when I when I come across a person like that when you've been working in this business for as long as I have, you, you work with hundreds of people. And, um, you know, I tell myself, this person's got pictures on somebody. How can they continue to be here when they're so poisonous? And I, I think it's just because they can do their job and they're allowed to get by with the other stuff. Um, but we all come across that apparently. So think about how important this is in the thick of busy season when you're trying to move a return or an audit through your workflow and passing it on to the next person. How much quicker can you get the deliverable out the door when you have complete trust in their competence? And how much of a bottleneck is it conversely when you don't have trust in their competence? Um, you've all seen this. Uh, we, we see it on a daily basis. And then, uh, like I said, next trust and integrity. Will this person do the, the right thing when no one's looking? Um, this is really, kind of the, the base of trust. And this, this is what you think to yourself when you think of trust overall is, will this person do the right thing when nobody's looking? Do people trust me to do the right thing when no one's watching? It's just one of the foundational elements of it. So where does trust come from? Like I've alluded to, trust comes from individuals, um, people. There, there's no, there's no, corporation that puts out trust. You can't buy it. You, you can't build it uh, in, a, in a traditional sense. You can build it with relationships, but individuals bring trust to your organization. Um, everybody that comes through your firm, whether they stay 10 days or 10 years, they bring their own personal philosophy and beliefs on trust. 
and their life experiences up to that point shape their approach to trust and their ability to build and maintain trusting relationships. So when you're a firm of 10 people or 400 or a thousand, you've got literally a rainbow of colors of trust in your firm. Um, and untrustworthy individuals can leave a real lasting mark uh, on the organization, especially if they're not dealt with quickly. I think we've all probably had this too, is that we've seen some favorite person al be allowed to be untrustworthy and they, they remain and they're not dealt with quickly. Um, and how we see those people get handled can establish our organizational trust. Just, you, you all know this. Um, and it can destroy trust in the organization very, very quickly. That's why it's, it's just very fragile. Um, and when you have trust in your firm, you'll know it. Um, you're you're going to see that you've got consistent consistency in treatment, uh, even handed policy enforcement. Um, as we've gotten bigger, you know, when you're, when you're 49, 20, 50, 49 people, um, you don't have to have that many policies and it's kind of loosey goosey and, but as you get bigger, like we've, we've, you know, approaching 400 people, you've got to have everything locked down with a policy so that you can be fair in application of those policies. Um, so when you've got, when you've got this in your firm, you're going to see consistency in treatment and policies. You're going to see transparency. Um, the firm's going to have empathy and compassion. There's going to be vulnerability between people. Um, I've got a personal anecdote uh, about vulnerability um, right after COVID uh, happened and the, the lockdowns happened and every, you know, everybody was staying at home and, and the world just went upside down completely. Um, I was on a, a meeting with my um, C-suite, which is, we call integrated services, our CEO and our COO and me and human resources and marketing. And uh, during the conversation, our CEO, noticed that I was markedly thinner than I was the previous month. And, and he just said kind of lightheartedly, Hey, Steve, are you, have you been working out? You look, you look great. You look a lot thinner. And just without even thinking, I said, no, I've actually had crippling anxiety and I can't eat just without even thinking. I just blah, gave, gave up this very personal information. And, um, that's because I trust my coworkers. I, I implicitly trust them with that information. I don't care if it was a HIPAA violation. I couldn't care less, but I was ready to talk about it with anybody that would listen. And uh, it's a very, very good eye-opening moment for everybody because that started a conversation around, hey, everybody's struggling right now at this this time. You know, a couple months after COVID lockdowns, people are really having mental health issues. And I, I was not immune from that. And I was able to share that freely and kind of get the conversation started about it. So that's just me. Mo most people wouldn't do that, blurt out something so personal like that, but um, that's what I bring to my group and, and uh, to the firm is that open. And, and, honest, and uh, Steve, when, when I just have a quick question here, sure. I'm sure it's on everybody's mind. How did your team respond when you shared this? Cause you're oh. all like, ex you're all like top executives. So yeah. how did, how did they respond? Yeah, well, initially you could hear a pin drop because it was so out there that, you know, most people wouldn't do that. But immediately, um, empathy, compassion. Yeah. What can we do to help you? Uh, should we start a support group in the firm for people? You know, immediately there were solutions happening. It was great. Yeah. And um, just that one little thing and, and it opens up conversation and that's because there's implicit trust in our whole team mm -hmm. at that level. And, uh, so it's something pretty special. A lot of companies that wouldn't happen. Um, so being vulnerable is, is, uh, a great way to earn somebody's trust or have it granted to you. Um, I found this on Glassdoor. Um, and, and this is how we know that in it we've, we've, built and developed and maintained trust. There's this um, review of us out on Glassdoor that I didn't pay anybody to write. It's kind of a humble brag moment. Um, and the, I have a sneaking suspicion the person that wrote this might be on the call. 
uh, possibly, but I'm not not going to call her out. Um, but we get reviews like this because we've worked very hard to build this culture of service and competence in IT. And they say the cons of leaving Hogan Taylor is once you've worked at IT, HT and have this unbelievable and competent IT team, it's hard to work anywhere else. And this is what we thrive on, this kind of feedback. Uh, we hear this from people that started our firm and have come from somewhere else. And, and here we hear this from people that have left the firm and go have a different IT experience. Um, so this is very important to us to have the trust of the people that we serve. So every, every new hire in IT gets scrutinized on their belief in customer service. And, and we make sure that's a genuinely important thing to them. And I've been here 17 years and everybody I've hired and everybody we've merged with, um, we ensure that everybody is of like mind in this area uh, because we know how quickly it can be destroyed, the, the trust in IT and the, the trust in our competence and, and uh, ability to serve. Um, we know one person could bring the bring the house down. So we guard this very carefully like it's a pile of gold because it, it really is to us. Yeah, and folks out there who are not in IT, the lens here that Steve is, is coming at obviously is as the CIO, but these things obviously apply to every every you know every group. The interesting thing about IT as I was thinking about this, Steve, is that your team is seeing people at their worst, most stressed moments. Yeah. I mean, think about that. They can't do they can't do their work. Something's not working. They yeah. they're afraid. They're they can't make their deadline. They're anxious, right? There's other, so, there's other adjectives, yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So as you're thinking this through, folks, think about your own role and 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 what like what you'd like people to say about you and about your organization. So I think it's a really good exercise. And I'm glad yeah. you went ahead and found an example, Steve, of of something that, you know, uh, validates, you know, what you're what you're experiencing internally. Yeah. And when you have this kind of trust and respect and and you've built this kind of capital in your firm through trust everything just works easier. My, my job does not feel like work because I don't have to deal with a lot of garbage because I'm trusted and my, my group is trusted and we trust each other and we back each other up and we have each other's backs. And uh, it's just amazing what can happen when you have trust in your firm or your group. Um, one of my favorite books on this subject is Stephen uh, M. R. Covey's uh, The Speed of Trust. And I'm going to refer to it and summarize something here. He's got a great table in his book that um, summarizes the dividends that you earn when you have high trust in your firm. He, he believes that there's literally a, a payoff um, and he breaks it down in different levels of, of trust. But I, I included the 20% dividend, and the 40% dividend here when you've got at a level where trust is a visible asset and then a level where you've got world class trust. And these are the attributes of the firm. When you've got it and uh you you can see you might be able to see some of yourselves in these uh, attributes um he says you get a 20 percent dividend when you when the focus is on work there's effective collaboration and execution there's positive partnering relationships and employees with employees there's helpful systems and structures strong creativity and innovation and many of our many of our firms have this um high-performing firms, good firms out there. But world-class trust is a 40% dividend, and it's it's a pretty high bar, really high collaboration and partner, partnering, effortless communication, positive, transparent relationships with employees and all stakeholders, fully aligned systems and structures. There's that aligned word again. Strong innovation, engagement, confidence, and loyalty. The, those are not all easy to achieve but they're worth it because of the, the payoff, the 40% dividend. Um, he, this is kind of a summary of what he put in the book, but you, you can get the picture. And uh, any questions on that? Does, it, does that hit home with people? There aren't any questions, but Gina has posted um, another great book is The Trusted Advisor. So I know that one's a, that one's a good one as well. Sure. There's, there's a number, I think when you, re, when you do start reading these books, if you take away one or two things from each thing, um, it, these are really great ways to open conversations with your team. You know, have everybody read that same book or have everybody, 
you know, or have, or share, share what you've learned, you know, but yeah, that dividend. And I'm sure all of you are thinking about times when you worked in an organization where you got that 40%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my right-hand man, Josh Larkins is on the call and he, he would get up and say the same things that how well things work when there's trust in your, your team and in your organization. Cause I think we're pretty much there. Um, and when you don't have it, you're going to know that too. Um, you're going to have infighting and backstabbing. You're going to have the blame game, people being thrown under the bus by other people, um, high turnover, uh, managing by fear. I'm sure we've all worked in those firms or with people that, you know, manage by walking around the first matter of fact, the first firm I worked for was a small firm and one of the founding partners would walk around and, um, make sure people's, you know, butts were in their seats and looking at their screens and, you know, no less talking, more work. And that just puts people in a, in a bad situation. Nobody likes that. Um, and then retribution when you do things wrong. Um, so you'll, you'll know, you'll have a gut feeling when you've got low trust in your organization. Uh, Stephen Covey's got uh, a good section on what the tax is when you've got low trust. So he, he thinks that, and I believe that there's truly a tax on your organization or your team when you've got a low trust um, situation. So if you've got non-existent trust, there's a very high tax for that, 80% tax. In, and we've all seen these before in our careers, I'm sure. Totally dysfunctional environment, toxic culture, open warfare, sabotage, grievances, lawsuits, criminal behavior. I'm not sure we've all seen that, but you know what I'm talking about. Militant stakeholders that refuse to budge any ground or compromise. Intense micromanagement, like I was talking about earlier. Uh, redundant hierarchy. Everybody's got their own little fiefdoms. We've, I'm sure we've all seen that. Punishing systems and structures. You're not allowed to fail where you get fired. Um, and then moving up the chain a little bit where you've just got a low trust, you've still got a 40% tax on your organization. CYA behavior, and we've we've had that poisonous people. You got to keep a CYA folder on them just to not be thrown under the bus. Uh, hidden agendas where people aren't transparent with, with what their intent is. Again, militant stakeholders political camps with allies and enemies. I think we've all seen situations with um, cliques in firms and how they're, you know, warring with each other across offices or whatever um, totally pulls you down. You also have many dissatisfied employees and stakeholders in the uh, bureaucracy and redundancy and systems and structures. This is just another summary of what Stephen Covey had in his book. Um, but it's it's real, very real. Any questions about that or comments? No, I was just, it's funny. I was feeling happy on the previous slide about the dividends and now I'm feeling all bummed out about, yeah. the, <laughs> about the tax. <laughs> yeah, if you work with people long enough, you're yeah. gonna see these things. I was, I had, I had one, I can only think of one place that I worked and they didn't work there for very long. Yeah, I, I really, truly didn't work there. In fact, it doesn't even show up like on my resume because it was one of those early jobs that I just don't even, I just, it was only a few months because I just, it was all the, this non-existent trust. And I just yeah. realized I'd made a mistake the almost the second day I joined. It's awful. Yeah. 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 And the flip side is that look how long you'll stay if there is trust. I've been right. at the firm 17 years. Josh That's Larkins right. has been at the firm 19 years, 19 or 20 yeah. years. I mean, yeah. it's, it's wild how good it can be if you're in a good environment. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're humans. We're emotional animals. Trust is fragile. Uh, a quick and easy way to damage trust is to shame someone when they're being vulnerable with you, even if it's inadvertent. Um, Allison taught me that uh, even one little moment of incivility can damage trust and, and irreparable harm. Uh, she had an example of, of critiquing a, a marketing staff's headline and just nonchalantly or innocently said that the uh, 
the, the headline was kind of in the waste of space category. And that damaged the relationship so bad. She was just critiquing innocently and didn't realize it, but he actually left the company because of this. Allison, any? Yeah, it was a, it was when Steve and I were talking about this presentation, we were trying to come up with ideas of what you could, what we could share with low trust, you know, and I, I had never thought of myself as being a person that would foster low trust. Um, but I did see a TED talk on the importance of civility at work. And I realized that I had done something to a, an employee who I didn't understand why he had left. Like, and what had happened, I, and when I, when I traced it back, when I really thought about it, I traced it back to that one moment. And he was so upset with that one comment. And of course we're working remote, right? So it was, it was, it was, it was exacerbated because it was on screen and he couldn't see my body language and I couldn't see his. And, and he ended up, he ended up resigning like two to three months later. And, and I was never able to build that trust back. It was like that one moment. So, yeah, so it's really hard when you're, when you're, at, when, so being civil and taking and assuming good intent and understanding that, that people are emotion, we are, we are emotional, whether we want to be or not. Um, it's, it's really important and you can actually break trust very easily yeah. as I did. So let's take a poll. Have you ever lost, left a job because of trust issues? All right, let me launch this poll. It should be on your screen now, folks. Go ahead and click. Um, you're gonna answer, yes, I have, no, I have not, or I, I haven't, but I really thought about it. So, so far we've got 50% of people have chimed in. Let's see if we can get to 100%. This is anonymous, by the way, we can't see. Um, if the screen is blank on your end, you've probably got a pop-up issue. So if you if you can just put in the, in the screen, in the chat, if you're not seeing it. Um, yes, you have, no, you have not, or I haven't, but I've really thought about it. So we've got 75% have participated. So, so far it's, it's, it's interesting, it's a, it's a tie. Um, yes, I have is 44%, no, I have not is 33%, and I haven't is 22%. So sorry, not a tie, but 44, yes, 33, no, 22, I haven't, but I've thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you have to get to a pretty high level of dissatisfaction to leave a company and, and trust will do that. Lack of trust will do it quick. Especially if you don't see any any like light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, if it's, if it's coming from the top, or it's being allowed laterally, destroyer. So what are some of the benefits of high trust organizations? Um, a couple of business authors that, that I've read some of their books um, say that trust is the most significant predictor of individual satisfaction with their organizations. Yeah, would everybody agree with that? I, it's a great, It's a great quote and I totally believe in that. You're going to have reduced turnover. Um, the cost of turnover is extremely high. It's generally, generally accepted that it's about 1.5 to two times their salary to replace that person. Um, change management is easier when you've got trust. Uh, people accept change more readily when they trust their leaders. Motivation increases. Uh, people will, will be motivated to, to work towards a common goal if they're not under constant threat from something or somebody. Um, teamwork and cooperation improve. Um, when you can let your guard down and be vulnerable, people, t teams just excel when you can let your guard down. Um, trust makes room for Kaizen. Kaizen is the word, the Japanese word for continuous improvement. Um, if you're familiar at all with Lean Six Sigma, um, Kaizen is Japanese word for continuous improvement. It's, it's, uh, really important that people keep doing this and they can only do it if they, they trust the environment that they're in. Trust makes room for failure, learning and growth. Um, we all know if we're able to fail and fail fast and learn from it and share those, those lessons that we can grow. But if we think there's gonna be retribution or punishment or get fired for making a, a mistake, um, you're gonna to tend to hide them. 
the speed of your business increases and costs are reduced, um, which is kind of wild to think about. Um, but when you've got trust in your organization, you can actually increase the velocity of your output and decrease your costs. Um, all of these benefits have the potential to positively impact your bottom line. And why, so why wouldn't we try to build trust in organizations? Yeah. And I thought that Gina made an excellent comment early on as you were going through these points, Steve. Um, she says, it's amazing what you're willing to forgive and or talk about when you trust your colleagues and your boss. So that opens up for more for this Kaizen, right? This continuous improvement. Um, and the other thing I thought was interesting as you were going through this is the amount it costs to train someone new, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's an interesting thing. It's like you really want to you really want to work on on having an having an atmosphere where people can, you know, the words that there's a lot of buzzwords, you know, bring your bring your whole self to work, right? Um, you know, trust your team, trust your trust your manager, trust your coworkers, right? Yeah. Be be we, civil, be polite, <laughs> be kind. <laughs> we we have a metric in our CIO peer groups in in Boomer that uh, to hire a, a technology worker costs about ten thousand dollars just in hard costs of the equipment and software licensing and all that stuff. That does not even take into a, a account the training costs getting somebody up to speed so if you're if you've got constant you know turnover and churn of people it adds up very very quickly i know we've all had a lot of turnover in the past couple of years due to just covid and people reevaluating their lives so hopefully it slows down but turnover is just a killer um, to the bottom line uh, so how do others measure up if we were going to measure ourselves um, i found this great graphic um, about trust in, in different groups. And we have the highest trust in medical scientists and scientists in the military. While at the bottom is journalists, business leaders, and elected officials. Um, I didn't know that business leaders would be so low, but of course we know about elected officials and journalists. The blue is everything above the line is, is trust. Everything below the line is the amount of distrust. And the dark blue is simply the magnitude of trust within the whole. So people trust medical scientists a great deal, most recently, 29%. But look at even business leaders. We're, we're business leaders. And we're in the business of trust, being CPAs, CPA firms. Yeah, am I reading this right? Um, that business leaders, if you go to year 2021, which is the last year this yeah. was done, am I reading this right that only 4% are trusted a great deal? Yes. Wow. 40%, a fair amount. Uh, a fair of, amount. Of that, yeah. only 4% of the 40 is, are a is, great deal. Yeah. So 40 and 60 overall is 100. So that's how you read this chart. Yeah. And of the of the of the blue, four percent is is well. That's that's wow. Yeah, it's it's, it's wild. So Oof. we've got to do. We're we're starting out behind the eight ball already. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do everything we can to build build trust um, in business. So I I thought that was. It's pretty, pretty sobering. Yeah, yeah, Deanna has it. Um, Gina said this is a great visual. Deanna says it really is so eye opening, especially with the business leaders. Yeah. 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 So folks, if you're if you're thinking about this and feeling bad about your organizations, don't because I think you can see that you're not you're not in the you're like you're 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 in the majority, right? You're not in the minority, right? Like yeah. you've got a 40 60 split. So 40% yeah. of business leaders are trusted with 4% being a great deal. And then 60% have got some work to do. So, you know, that's that's about what I would think actually 40 60. Yeah. But it's a bummer to see the 60, is it? Yeah. So it's it is. quite a big, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty wild. So we're starting out in the negative already, but uh, there's things we can do to improve that. So next, how do you measure up? Um, you know, I think a great way to find that out is to do an organizational survey of it. We, we've done many surveys throughout the years and doing an organizational trust survey can give you a benchmark to work from if you're trying to build it in your firm. Um, 
and some of the questions you could ask your, your people anonymously, do you feel that you're trusted to get your job done? Do you feel you have the autonomy to make decisions in your role? Do you feel your opinions are valued? Do others act on your suggestions? What happens if you make a mistake? Do you hide it? Do you admit it? Do you, are you able to learn from it open, you know, and, and share these lessons? Um, there's many others that you could ask, but highly recommend that you, you in your firm that you do a, a anonymous survey just so, so your leaders can know what the temperature of, of trust is in your firm. Uh, last week, I did an informal survey of, of my IT group were 11 people um, and just to prove how personal trust is to each person, just about every answer was different. Um, so I asked uh, anonymously, what builds trust with you in, in your in our leaders? And um, I got back responses. Uh, transparency was a, a common theme. Uh, empathy and caring for people, providing feedback in a timely manner. Team inclusion on decisions so everyone feels like they're in it together. And that's something I need to be more uh, sensitive to because I, you know, sometimes I get in a groove and I think I'm the boss and I'm the one that makes decisions. And no, I, I need to include my group so everybody knows we're rowing in the same direction. And uh, my, my team has on occasion brought that up and, you know, called me on it. And uh, I, I told Josh when, when he promoted to IT director that part of his job is going to be managing me not just managing his, his group, but, but managing up to me. And that's one of the things I've got to be more inclusive, uh, more frequently being open to explaining why decisions are made along the same lines. Answering the whys is very important. Uh, many times, if you'll just answer why people can understand why we're going in a certain direction, that's all they want to know. Um, admitting faults, being vulnerable, keeping confidences. Um, gosh, I've had, I've had people confide things in me that are just shocking, absolutely shocking. <clears throat> and that's because they trusted me uh, at that moment. Um, leaders that listen, build trust, being approachable, having an open door environment, which we do, uh, supporting people even through their mistakes, not, you know, no retribution. Um, so th these are all from, you know, 10 different people and they're all pretty different. Um, so you've got to be aware of all of these uh, dimensions of, of trust in your teams. So how do we build trust? Some tips for building trust in your team and organization. Um, like I said, first thing I would do is survey your organization uh, to get a baseline. It's, it's easy and cheap. I think, you know, pretty much free to do an anonymous survey. Uh, we've all got survey tools like SurveyMonkey. Uh, over the years, we've done this many times to get uh, immediate understanding of where we are on any issue. Um, our IT group surveys the firm annually to make sure we're hitting the mark on uh, customer service and customer service and technical competence. And uh, we do it at the most dangerous time of year, right after tax season, when people are just coming off being on edge. They've had a CCH outage. They've you know, this and that has broken or whatever. We purposely do it right after tax season just to get their raw feedback. I think that's important that that even that establishes trust. And then we act on we act on that feedback. Um, and, and depending on your level of trust in your organization, it could take many, many years to fix big issues. Um, you got to have the right leadership that's willing to do it. But there's no better way to start than uh, getting an understanding of where you are today by doing a survey, anonymous survey. The next thing is just listen, listen more than you talk. Um, I'm a people person. I'm a yapper. Once I get started, I, don't, I can't shut up. So I got to get better at this myself is listening. And you got to listen the right way. You got to listen to understand somebody rather than listen to respond. And if, if people feel like they're being heard, um, they're, they're gonna, that's going to build trust. So it's really important to understand or, or be aware of what the troops are saying in the trenches in your firms uh, and act on that. If you're if you're hearing consistent negative patterns of of things people are saying, do something about it, fix it. 
It'll build trust. Next is be transparent. Um, communicate what is going on in your firm or in your team and answer the why, like I said before. Answer these questions openly and honestly, and it'll build trust in your, in your group. Um, something we do that has just been amazing is that our, our CEO records uh, informal 15 minute videos every month on different topics that are going on in the firm. He's sitting at his kitchen table or sitting at his, on his couch or whatever, and just talks talks about firm financials initiatives we've got going on through good times and bad. Um, he did this all throughout COVID was never chicken little about anything. He was, he was uh, very positive and, you know, he always says big days ahead, very uh, open and honest, honest in his communications and, and the uh, reception of that with the, with the employees is fantastic. Um, so he, we talk about all kinds of issues on these CEO clips um, and just about everything is on the table for open discussion in our firm. And that builds trust. Um, another thing you can do and things that we've done that have, have really ramped up our trust levels is establish a diversity, equity, inclusion and employee experience uh, initiatives. We've just started these in the past few years and we're diving in hard. I mean, we're not tiptoeing around on this, we're getting into it. And uh, people want to know that they can be themselves at work. You know, we know this. Um, one example is a, a, a person, our firm had a person confide in another person that they didn't feel like they could wear their hair in a style that was part of their ethnicity. Something with those of us with no hair, you know, take for granted, but um, this person felt like they couldn't wear their hair in a certain style and couldn't go to business meetings. And that one conversation started this um, effort. It, it, it grew, the right people got included on the conversation and our firm was like, wow, we need to get better at this. If, if you don't feel like you can wear your hair a certain way because it's, it's not you know, business-like, that's just wrong. So we, we started a, a full-blown diversity, equity, inclusion initiative uh, last year um, and people will stay at a firm that cares about them like that. Um, and we see that. And we're also doing employee experience um, initiatives, uh, finding out, you know, what do our employees really experience when they're onboarded with the firm and throughout their life cycle? So we're looking at all that. Um, people are greatest asset. We've got to treat them right. And uh, lastly, and th these are all my, my thoughts on this. There's, thousands of other ways to build trust, but uh, I, I say empower your people and let them do their jobs with their in their own way, with their own flair, um, with appropriate coaching along the way. I've seen time and time again that rigid micromanaging is absolutely soul sucking to people that want to perform for you. Um, so I, you know, one of the things we do in our IT team is Hire the right people, like hire for for uh, their beliefs in customer service and their bedside manner. Train them on the IT stuff and let them go. And people are going to perform if you do that. Um, micromanaging is a way to just destroy somebody's soul. So that's kind of my my soapbox speech about this. Um, our firm has a fantastic human capital uh, strategies group. If you need help on this, um, they can do assessments and and help your organization with all kinds of human capital um, projects um, in, in growing your firm the right way and improving trust. So, it, you know, hit us up if you want uh, some help with this, we can do it. Um, please connect with me. I, I love, I'm a people person. I love talking to people, love connecting with people, pulling you into my circle. Um, so here's my email, Twitter and LinkedIn. And if you want to work with me in a high trust organization, there's our careers page. We've got a great, great firm. Um, I, I love it. Uh, it doesn't feel like work. And when, when you've got that, it's just something special. And it's because of our leader, our CEO has driven this from the very top. And that's why we've got a firm like we do. Uh, a couple, a couple of things that I referred to, uh, this, the trust Bible to me is the speed of trust, but another good book that a lot of people haven't read is, is, uh, from Patrick Lencioni, and it's it's uh, getting naked. 
And it's really about being vulnerable with your clients, which could apply to any relationship, being vulnerable with them, asking dumb questions, serving them without requiring anything in return, openly helping somebody from the outset and, 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 and all that. It's really a, a neat book. It doesn't apply directly to trust, but it talks about vulnerability and, and that's a huge uh, component of trust. So that's really it. That's my talk. Uh, any, any questions or, or comments? There aren't any any questions, but there's there's comments. People are clapping. You know, you know, you know, five hands about the diversity and inclusion, and especially the employee experience. Um, it's interesting. I was watching something. Um, a TED, uh, it wasn't a TED talk. It was it was on LinkedIn. Um, it was just a video on basically um, instead of conducting exit interviews, conduct stay interviews. Like, yeah. and so your your idea of surveying and talking about it in your teams and just opening it up so that people feel, um, you know, that they feel safe and they feel included and they can they can talk about things. And then the other thing that I was thinking about was mistakes. Like, how can you create an an, an environment where, like, mistakes are like a positive thing because it's an opportunity to learn and put a process in place to to not have that happen again. And so allowing people to say, you know. Like I remember when I was at Intuit, we absolutely were allowed to fail. We knew we weren't going to lose our jobs if two conditions were met. Now, one was we had to fail quickly. Like don't build something really expensive and huge and then fail. So you build tests in along the way. And then the second one is we had to be willing to share what our hypothesis was, what our method was, and wow. why and why it failed. And then share it wild, widely so that everybody learned. Yeah. And just having that that idea that you could you could fail and it would actually be seen as a good thing was incredibly, incredibly power empowering. Yeah. And, it's, and that's Stephanie's great. saying Stephanie's saying, thank you for validating my perception of a good a good work environment. Yeah. For those of you that find yourself in a low trust organization, um, you can if you're the leader, you can work to improve it. If you are a worker, a line worker, it's a little harder. Yeah. So um leaving might be the thing that you might want to do in which case there's lots of jobs out there for you right now that's the good news um the bad news is you want to you know you want to you're leaving something that you might be invested in so yeah it's tough yeah. it's a bad situation yeah but the good news is for accountants and bookkeepers and tax pros there's a ton of work for out there yeah. for you right now including us we've got openings so <laughs> no, that, taylor is recruiting from. folks yeah you heard it here all right. Well, thank you, Steve. This was incredibly good. I really enjoyed it. Um, even thank though you. you and I worked on this presentation beforehand, I learned a lot at seeing you present it. I had a great job. And Appreciate thank you, everyone, for your, your engagement and your comments and your questions and really appreciate it. All thank right. All. So the, just next steps, everybody, we will be posting this on the Grove and we will send you all an email showing you how you can get the the, 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 the PowerPoint in a PDF, um, you know, the, the copy of it, and also the recording. So, and Steve will also be on the Grove to, um, to answer questions as you go. And Steve, if you wouldn't mind just going back to the, your contact page, um, so people can just take a quick look there. There we go. If you want to take a quick, quick, quick screenshot there, you can have that, um, or you can wait for the email. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.